Hi there, Ron from RJM Music here once again. In this week's Mastering the Mastermind, we're going to talk about external switches. Um, the ma- all the masterminds, uh, PVCs, LTs, and GTs, can take uh, one or more pairs of external switches, and those are just simply um, additional switches you can connect to and perhaps put next to the mastermind PVCs and the LT will each take uh, one external switch and the Mastermind GT can take um, two pairs of external switches for a total of four uh, actual switches. Um, As you can see here, this is our switch that we sell and it has two uh, momentary foot switches with LEDs over them and that's um, what you plug into one of the uh, external switch inputs on the rear. Um, You use a TRS cable. Um, This is discussed in more detail in our second episode regarding connections. And as I mentioned, the PVCs and the uh, LTs have a single external switch input for one of these. And then on the GTs, there are two. So you get that all connected and um, that's all you need. Um, You can use other uh, momentary switches. Um, It is important that they are momentary to work correctly, um, but take note that it has to be wired in a special way for the LEDs to work. If you don't care about LEDs, if you're using these switches for like bank up and bank down buttons where they wouldn't light up anyway, um, that's no problem. Um, You can use any momentary switches, but if you, uh, you know, if you do want those LEDs to operate correctly, you need it wired uh, in our particular way. So look for a switch that's uh, specifically made for the masterminds or that is uh, wired uh, based on our instructions that we provide in the manual. So looking here at the editor, um, when you go to the buttons tab, um, you'll see on LTs and PVCs, there are two buttons here. Um, They are set up for bank up and bank down by default. Um, And these represent the external switches. Um, On a, if we were looking at the GT editor, there'd be a, a column of four of them here instead. And they're uh, numbered like this is the first one, second one, and then three and four would be below if we had those. Um, Which switches these represent on on your particular switch depends on how the switch is wired. But on ours, um, the the top one would actually be the left switch on on the uh, external switch box and the the, uh, bottom one would be the right switch or switch number two. You can refer to the other videos on editing buttons, but when you double click, you get all the same settings and all the uh, you know, same capabilities of any other switch, which is pretty nice. And uh, the only difference really is that these switches are, um, obviously they only have a, a single color LED. And so these settings don't mean the same thing that they do on other buttons. And the way we handle it is that um, Black means that the LED should be off, and any other color means that the LED should be on. And so, I mean, on a bank button, this doesn't make any sense because a, a bank doesn't a bank button never um, is on or off. You just kind of press it, and it does something. Um, so, one thing that uh, some people like to do is just keep those LEDs on all the time so they can find them on a dark stage. And so, in that case, you would turn both of your on color and off color to something other than black, and now that switch, that switch's LED would just stay on full time. If this were a, uh, an IA button where you're actually controlling a, uh, a loop on a switcher, for example, we can just make, like say, we've got this now, con- we can have this controlling loop one on a mini effect gizmo, for example. Um, there we go. And now um, on this one, it would, just work like a switch that turns on loop one, and when the uh, when the, the switch is off, the LED is off, and when the switch is on, the LED is on. Um, simple as that. Pretty easy. Circling back to the momentary switch thing, I, I did say um, that that the switches do need to be momentary in an external switch, and I, I uh, have been repeating myself on this a bit, but it's an important point that. Um, even though it's a momentary switch, it doesn't have to act like one. So people say, well, I didn't use a momentary switch because I wanted it to act as a latching switch and and stay on when I press it and then turn off when I press it again. Um, The masterminds handle this in software. They expect a momentary switch, but it will actually act as a latching switch when you, um, you know, just by the, the software can make that happen. And so 
with these settings, it would act as a latching switch, even though it's momentary. And so one press would turn the loop on on the Mini Effect Gizmo, and one press would turn it off, and the LED would turn on accordingly. Um, we can check this momentary box here, and if we did that, then loop one would turn on while we hold the um, the hold the button on the external switch, and as soon as we turn as soon as we lift our foot off of the switch, it would turn the loop off, and so. Even, so that switch can actually act as latching and mom momentary, um, you know, just by the uh, setting of this checkbox here. The reason why we have this uh, specific requirement for momentary and why we have to have them wired specially for the LEDs to work is because we've done some, uh, some tricks in the hardware, which isn't normally something that can be done on these, these kind of uh, switches like this, and that is that the LED is completely independent of the switch that it's attached to, and it can be um, controlled by the mastermind independently. If you had, for example, like a latching um, amp switch or something, amp foot switch or something, typically the way it's um, the way it works is, you know, when you turn the switch on, that LED is definitely going to turn on, and when you turn the switch off, it's definitely going to be turned off because they're wired uh, in series together, where they where where they're you know electrically tied together. Um, ours are wired in parallel, wired a little bit different, and so what that end result means is that, um, you know, what the switch is doing isn't necessarily what the LED is doing. Why is this important? Um, because um, you can do some more advanced things. Um, a favorite thing to do with external switches is, for example, to use it as a tap tempo switch. And so you have a, you know, a tap tempo switch is typically a momentary switch, and so that's no problem. We can do that. Um, and you know, set it up as as such, and then um, if you turned on, for example, flash with tempo, what's going to happen is it becomes a tempo button, and you tap that switch a couple times to establish a tempo, and that LED is going to flash at that tempo rate. So the LED is is not um, you know operating at the same time as the switch. It's it's actually being controlled by the mastermind to turn on and off, and so it's showing something different than just is the switch on or off. It's a long-winded way of explaining it, but uh, it's probably about the best I could do because it's a, it's a, uh, it's an important topic and uh, you know, a kind of a, a cool trick. Well, it was a short episode this time. Um, external switches are uh, thankfully a pretty easy topic. Um, if you have questions or or any comments, please post them below. And as always, please uh, like and subscribe if you like these videos and want to see more. Thanks so much.